Hello and welcome to another GIMP tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to look at using the text tool that's within GIMP um, to be able to follow a particular path. So you can basically write something that will follow any shape that you want, any shape that you draw. And sometimes the text tool can be quite limited within GIMP so this is um, a nice little trick just to make some of your images more dynamic. Um, just to give you an idea of the sort of trick I'm talking about here, um, I've got a quick mock-up that I've made, um, which is a very old and lame joke, so please excuse me. But um, as you can see, it says circular reasoning is awesome because circular reasoning is awesome. So a uh, little logical joke for you there. Um, so the first thing we're going to need to do is we'll just start off with a blank page. And the just to make things easy, I'll just start off by using a, a circle the same way that I just did then. So if you remember the uh, paths tutorials I did a couple of years ago now, um, I looked at how you can use the selection tools to create a path and how you can use the path tools to create a selection. Well, We're going to be using both of those skills today so if I go a bit too fast over some of these things then you can look at those, those older videos in the vector art series and um, hopefully they'll be able to fill in any gaps that I gloss over today. But it's pretty straightforward, so I hope you can uh, follow what I'm doing today. The first thing we'll do is um, select the circle tool or the ellipse select tool. Now this is usually just the selection tool, but we're going to use it for um, actually doing some drawing. So we choose this tool, and very simply we just draw a circle. And I'll just center that. Now what we're going to need to do with this selection that we've made is turn that into a path. Um, a path is something that we can then use to draw over afterwards. So, um, what you'll need is your path stock, which is in your um, your layers, channels, paths, and undo box. Um, every time I use this, somebody asks me how to get this back because they've lost it. The very easy way, if you lose it, um, particularly if you lose this dock with all four of them in, um, is just to go to I believe it's tools. Uh, no, sorry, Windows and just dockable dialogues, no sorry, recently closed, you can tell I don't go here very often, um, and usually if you've closed it down by accident you can find it in here. Um, the one we're going to need today is the one with layers and paths on, um, but anyway, I've shown you where it is, don't ask me. <laughs> I'm full of sympathy today. Anyway, so um, we're going to click on the paths one, which is this one um, up here, and once you've clicked on that, um, okay, so once you've uh, clicked on your paths tool, um, at the bottom of the paths dialog, um, you'll see there's um, an option here which is like a red circle with some paths and handles on it, um, which says selection to path, which will turn that selection into a path. So we just click that very simply, and you see that's now been added to our selections. And just like I can with any um, normal layers, um, I can turn it off and on. Um, and as you can see at the moment, that doesn't seem to be having much of a difference over here on the, the image window. But um, if I was to make this invisible and get rid of the old selection, you can't see it at all, but you can still see that the path's there. So um, that's the selection that we're going to be using. Uh, that's the path, sorry, that we're going to be using. Now the next thing we're going to need is some text. So um, I just use my text tool. And for this, you want to draw... Um, a box. I'll leave it here for the moment, but uh, this may cause trouble for me, so we'll see what happens. Um, and then we just type in whatever we want to type in. So, um, this is a circle. Now you can see at the moment the lettering is spaced out. Uh, that's because this is the setting I had it at for my last one. Um, the way I've spaced these letters out is by using um, this tool down here which is the options that comes up whenever we use the text toolbar. Um, again, if you lose that, um, it's through the tool options. Um, so you go to Add tab, and um, you'll find tool options up here. So if you lose it, that's where you can find that one. But I haven't lost it, so I can just play with it here. And you can see this one here, it talks about um, how far apart each of the letters are. So as I turn that down, you can see the letters get closer and closer to each other until they're exactly on top of each other or even reading backwards. So, you know, you might find use for that one day. Um, 
So we'll just start off with something very simple like this. And you'll see there's also a button underneath this that says text along path. Now that does exactly what it says it does. So we'll press enter. And you can see we've got this is a circle has started following that circle. Now if I want that to go all the way around, then obviously I can just control Z this or control Z this for our American cousins. Um, stretch this out, hit it again. And you see this time it goes a little bit further around. So you might have trial and error with that until you, you know, make it reach the end of the path that you want. So we can actually get rid of this text now because we don't need it. And this isn't something that we're going to use. So if I just go to my layers um, and I can just delete that layer by clicking on the text layer and the little garbage can at the bottom. And then I'm going to go back to my paths and you can see that I can make each of these visible or invisible. Now the easiest way to turn this particular path into um, proper text, firstly we'll make the, uh, the circle path uh, invisible and then we'll work on this, um, this is a circle path. What we want to do with this, at the moment it's a path and we want to turn it into a selection. So before we use this path to selection tool, this time we're going to use Sorry, we use the selection to path tool. This time we're going to use the path to selection tool, which is the red square next to it. Uh, so if I hit that, you'll see we get some marching ants. Now, if I turn that off, um, so if I turn off the, the path, you'll see that the selection is still active. We can still see the marching ants. I now need to go to the layer, and I need to make sure I've got the background layer selected, or whichever layer it is that I want my text to be written over. And then we're going to use one of the tricks from the old paths videos that I had a few years ago. We're very simply going to press control and comma and that will fill in that selection that we have with whatever our foreground color is. Okay, so by pressing control and comma um, we basically paint in to the selection whatever the foreground color was. If we were to press control and full stop or control and period and then it gives us the background color. So, you know, I'll let you figure out how you want to use that. Uh, finally, to get rid of the marching ants so we can see what we've written, um, we can just press Shift and Control and A, and that deselects everything. Uh, if that shortcut key doesn't work for you for any reason, you can just go to Select and None, and then that will get rid of the selection as well. And there you go, we have um, it following a particular shape. Now. Whenever I do this I often have all sorts of troubles because I forget to select um, the particular layer that I want to work on or I forget to turn off the various paths that I've worked on. Um, you know, you just need to make sure you, you follow the procedure step by step and you shouldn't have any problems. Anyway, uh, I hope you found this helpful and um, thanks for watching. I'll see you next.